Welcome everyone. My name is Josef Schlacher and I'm a PhD student in material science at the Montana University at Leoben. Today I'm going to talk about how we can significantly improve the strength of 3D printed alumina ceramics by using a so-called multi-material design approach. In general, alumina ceramics are widely used due to their outstanding properties, such as high hardness, wear resistance, high strength, and so on. Therefore, we can find alumina as typical materials for cutting tools or ceramic tiles. Due to the recent progress in 3D printing technologies, um, it is also possible to fabricate highly complex shaped um, alumina ceramics, which opens new application fields. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on the strength, mechanical strength of 3D printed alumina ceramics. But how can the strength be described in ceramics? Um, <clears throat> ceramics are brittle, which means a fracture for ceramics starts from defects, which can be described as cracks according to the gravity current criterion. If the stress intensity factor K uh, at crack dip exceeds the fracture toughness K1C of a material, failure will occur. Since these defects differ in size, shape, and location, ceramics cannot be described with one single value. Therefore, we need to do statistical analysis of such viable diagrams. The probability of failure is plotted over the failure stresses. So from this strength distributions, we can basically extract two parameters. The viable modulus M, which is a measure of scatter. So imagine that a high viable modulus means low scatter and the characteristic strength sigma zero, which is defined as the failure stress where the probability of failure is approximately 63%. So the question is, how can we shift the strength distribution to the right side? Or let's say, how can we enhance the characteristic strength? One approach would be designing with residual stresses. In each case where dissimilar materials are sealed together through relatively strong bonding, and undergo differential shrinkage from going down for syndrome temperature, stresses arises within the layers. The strain mismatch between the layers can either be due to phase transformations, as it is in the case of zirconia, chemical reactions, for instance, in classes, or most commonly in ceramics due to the different coefficients of thermal expansions. Let's consider a laminated architecture with a uh, material A in the outer region and a middle region of material B. Let's imagine that this material B has a higher CTE than A. If we would cool it down from sintering temperature to room temperature, we would introduce compressive residual stresses in the surface region and denser residual stresses in the middle region. These residual stresses can be calculated or analytically estimated according to this equation. What we can basically see is that the, the ratio of the total layer thicknesses, or let's say the volume ratio of material A to B, plays a significant role. So we can um, tailor our residual stresses with appropriate volume ratio, and we design to, to design um, systems with higher mechanical properties. Depending on the location of the compressive residual stresses, we can distinguish between two systems. And the first one, the compressive <coughs> uh, layers or stresses are located in the outer surface region. This is used to enhance the mechanical resistance. And in the second system, the compressive residual stresses are embedded within, or the layers are embedded within the architecture to increase their resistance to crack propagation, and this allows even to um, arrest the cracks starting from the surface in this embedded layer region. This is called the so-called damage tolerance system. In this talk, I'm going to focus on this first system. The first system was first studied by Nordberg from classes, and this is now technically exploited by the company Koenig and Gorilla classes. <clears throat> So recently, Krautgasser studied the uh, layered architecture combining textured and decvexed alumina embedded in um, glass matrix, and so <coughs> low temperature co fired ceramics. So he had three different uh, multi material designs with different volume ratio. And what we can learn from this is that with 
this layered architecture systems, the characteristic strength is significantly higher than the monolithic counterparts with the difference corresponding to the residual stresses. So all these systems are fabricated with the tape casting technology. So the question now is, can we use the 3D printing technology to design multi-material architecture with tailored compressive residual stresses? So all the samples were fabricated by the company Litos by using the lithography-based ceramic manufacturing technology. <clears throat> this LCM technique is based on the polymerization of photosensitive a polymer ceramic matrix from um, exposing light from below through a transparent rotating bed in a layer by layer way. The recent progress in stereolithographic printing techniques allow to ad uh, adapt this printing system to a two wet system by using or combining two different layers of material A and B. This was done by the company Litos, and this is the so called Serafab multimaterial 3D printer. <clears throat> so, all our multimaterial specimens are fabricated by using this printer by the company Litos, Vienna. So, first of all, to design a proper laminate, we need to know what are the basic material properties of our systems. So, the first material was monolithic alumina. And the second one to combine was zirconia and alumina with 20 volume percent zirconia. And such um, bars were printed in this printing direction for characterizing the properties. So after printing these bars, a sintering condition of 1600 degrees for two hours was, was selected. This yield to a relative density of approximately 98%. If you take a look on the basic material properties, we can see that the Young's modulus of alumina is significantly higher than the one of zirconia of the alumina. So one can expect that this difference in the elastic moduli needs to be considered in the correct evaluation of the strength of a multimaterial system. Furthermore, we can see that the CTE of zirconia of the alumina is higher than, the, than that of alumina. So if we think about the laminate architecture, we would expect compressive residual stresses in the alumina region, denser residual stresses in the zirconia dafen alumina. But so if we, at last, if we take a look on the, the fracture toughness, we realize that the one of the zirconia dafen alumina is significantly higher than the one of alumina. This is also well known from conventionally manufactured ceramics as the toughening effects in deprecanized stabilized zirconia ceramics. <clears throat> so by knowing this, how can we combine our system? So first of all, a reference material was printed in such a disc shape for 30 specimens for testing and another 30 specimen of an appropriate um, design. So by knowing the basic material properties, we decided to use a design with 70 microns in the alumina outside region and 700 microns in the embedded zirconia of the alumina region thickness. So if we would estimate the residual stresses according to these equations, we would get a characteristic, uh, we could get the compressive residual stresses of 320 megapascals in the surface region, which can be used for shielding, which is five times higher than the one of the denser compressive residual uh, of the denser residual stresses embedded. By looking at the microstructure, we see that in the alumina part, it is, uh, the microstructure looks homogeneous with um, a rather fine grain microstructure, mean grain size of approximately two microns, and the less content of porosity. <clears throat> This is very similar to the alumina region in our multimaterial system. If we take a look on the zirconia dafen alumina region in our laminate, we see that the average grain size is much smaller than um, one microns. Furthermore, it's worth highlighting that we have a really sharp interface. 
So this can be traced back to the appropriate sintering condition and to a very clean multi-material printing process. So if you evaluate the fracture strength, what, what, what is the result? So all the, the sample specimens were tested by using biaxial bending tests, but the so-called ball and free ball test. In the ball and free ball test, the discs are symmetrically supported by free balls and <clears throat> loaded by fourth ball in the opposite direction. The maximum tensile stress at the midpoint of the disc is defined as the strength. This <clears throat> strength um, depends on the, the, the fracture force F and the thickness of the specimen of the disc. Furthermore, we see that there is a prefactor. This prefactor depends on the specimen geometry, the support geometry, and the Poisson ratio of the monolithic um, ceramic. All this prefactor were <clears throat> determined over a wide parameter range. But in the case of a multi-material system, this prefactor needs to be corrected since there's an influence of the elastic mismatch. This was done by using FE analysis. So it is furthermore um, important to mention that the applied stress of the multi-material system is contributed to the one of the pure alumina, unshielded alumina, plus the compressive residual stresses acting in the surface. So what is the result? If we take a look at the strength distributions, we can see that the characteristic strength of the multi-material system with a value of one GPA is significantly higher than the one of the monolithic counterpart, with the difference corresponding to the compressive residual stresses in our surface layers. If we take a look on the fracture surfaces, we can see that in most cases, or other cases, failure for both systems occurred on, on larger grains directly at the surface or near to the surface regions. Furthermore, it is worth highlighting that in the case of a multi-material system, all fractures started um, in the alumina region of our laminate and not at the interface or at the embedded region. But what are the consequences for a practical application? If you think about demanding design, designs for demanding applications with where a high reliability, or let's say a low probability of failure is needed, we need to use, or it is recommended to use the three parameter label distribution instead of the two parameter one. If we take a look at the technically relevant range, there's no difference between two parameter and three parameter. But in the case of low probability of failure, this three parameter distribution tends asymptotically to a minimum strength, the so-called threshold strength. And this threshold strength is equal to the compressive residual stresses, which is here the third parameter of the distribution. So this threshold strength is so defined as the strength below which no failure will occur. <clears throat> so in conclusion, we can say it is possible to combine the multi-material approach by using the with the free printing technology to fabricate high strength alumina ceramics with, a, with the highest strength of one GPA so far for 3D printed alumina. So combining the positive aspects of the 3D printing technology together with the multi-material design approach uh, lead to novel application fields. Thank you for the attention.